Stop blocking your blessings from God today. You know in your heart of hearts that God wants to bless you more than you can possibly imagine or think. We often like to blame Satan, but did you know that we are often our worst enemies when it comes to receiving blessings from God? As Isaiah 59, 1 through 2 reveals, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. So what are these iniquities mentioned here, which we will call blessing blockers from now on? We will discuss seven of them today. And if you handle all seven of these, you will solve 99% of problems when it comes to blocking the blessings that God has for you. We will also say a prayer of freedom afterwards, so be sure to stay till the end. The first blessing blocker is a lack of faith. When we doubt God's promises or question his ability to provide, we create barriers that prevent us from receiving his blessings. Scripture reminds us of the power of faith in Hebrews 11:6. And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith is not merely a belief in the existence of God, but a deep-seated trust in who he is, in his character, in his way of seeing things, and a belief that what he promises he will do. As Hebrews 11 one says so eloquently, it is the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen. When we lack faith, we limit God's ability to work in our lives and hinder his blessings from manifesting. Just like in Nazareth, Jesus' hometown, where they rejected him out of too much familiarity, and he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Also, James clarifies in James 1.6, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. At the same time, I want to encourage those who feel that they lack faith and that this is the only reason why their prayers aren't answered. Oh, beloved, let this passage in 1 John be your guide. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. And even if our hearts condemn us, then we have confidence in God that whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandment and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. God is higher than your wishy-washy heart. Maybe you feel deep down that you don't have enough faith, but I assure you that God doesn't require great faith. Remember, Jesus said you only need a mustard seed worth of faith to move mountains, and he was able to answer the prayer, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Pray trust God and let him take care of the rest. In this area, you have no greater burden. Do not rely on your feeling of faith, but trust him that he is faithful. Now, if you are doing this, we need to move on to the other blessing blockers to get them out of the way of your blessing. The next obstacle to blessings is harboring unforgiveness in our hearts. When we refuse to forgive others, we block the flow of God's grace and mercy in our lives. Jesus taught us the importance of forgiveness in Matthew 6:14 and 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Unforgiveness is like a poison that seeps into our souls, corroding our peace and hindering our relationship with God. It builds walls of bitterness and resentment that separate us from experiencing the fullness of God's love and blessings. But when we choose to forgive, we release the burden of anger and hurt, allowing God's healing and restoration to flow freely. While you may feel that forgiveness is difficult, it is essential for our spiritual well-being and growth. And remember, it is not saying what was done to you is proper or correct in any way, shape or form. It is simply giving up your right to revenge and putting it in God's hands. As we extend grace and mercy to others in this way, we open ourselves up to receiving the abundant blessings of God's forgiveness and love. Let us therefore choose forgiveness over bitterness, and may the freedom and joy that come from forgiving others lead us into deeper intimacy with our Heavenly Father. 
The next blocker, number three for those counting, is quite subtle and requires constant vigilance, and this one is pride. It is a subtle blessing blocker that can hinder our relationship with God. When we exalt ourselves above others or rely on our strength and wisdom, we close ourselves to the blessings God wants to pour out upon us. Scripture warns us against pride in Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride blinds us to our need for God and fosters an attitude of self-sufficiency, leading us to trust in our abilities rather than relying on God's grace. It erects barriers between us and God, preventing us from experiencing His abundant blessings. However, Scripture also assures us through James, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. In contrast to pride in this verse, we find humility, which opens the door to God's blessings as we acknowledge our dependence on Him and submit to His will. Jesus exemplified humility, humbling himself to death on the cross for our salvation. He calls us to follow his example. According to 1 Peter 5-5, we are to clothe ourselves with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. As we strive to overcome pride, let us heed the words of Scripture found in James 4.10 and humble ourselves before God so that He may exalt us in due time. Let us cultivate a spirit of humility, acknowledging our dependence on God and seeking His will above our own. In doing so, we will open ourselves up to the abundant blessings that flow from a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now on to the next block, fear, which is not so subtle but is still a potent blocker of our blessings. It paralyzes us and prevents us from stepping out in faith. If we can't step off the boat, we definitely can't walk on water. So when we allow fear to control us, we miss out on the abundant blessings God has for us. God encourages us to trust Him and not give in to fear. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear often stems from a lack of trust in God's provision and protection. It whispers lies of doubt and insecurity, causing us to shrink back from God's plans and purposes for our lives. However, Scripture assures us that God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self-control. We are called to overcome fear with faith, trusting in God's promises and leaning on His strength in times of trouble. Jesus Himself admonished His disciples, saying, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. Likewise, when David faced the giant Goliath, he declared, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. As we confront our own fears and insecurities, let us take heart in memories of all the times that God has come through before. He was always faithful before, and He will be again. Now on to blessing blocker number five, and is also subtle and many think we have moved past it as a modern society, but this cannot be farther from the truth. What is this blocker? It is idolatry. Idolatry is better defined as placing anything above God in our lives. So when we prioritize worldly pursuits or material possessions over our relationship with God, we hinder His blessings from flowing freely into our lives. Scripture warns us against idolatry from the very beginning of the law in the Ten Commandments, when it says in Exodus 23, You shall have no other gods before me. Idolatry can take many forms in our lives, whether it be the pursuit of wealth, success, pleasure, or the worship of false gods and ideologies. In the New Testament, this blocker is described again in Romans 1.23. When we chase after these idols, we exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men. Scripture reminds us in Jonah 2.8 that those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Here is where we see that idolatry not only separates us from God, but also robs us of the blessings He desires to bestow upon us. Jesus Himself prioritized God above all else, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. 
He calls us to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and to have no other gods before him as well in Mark 12.30. When we align our priorities with God's kingdom and his righteousness, we position ourselves to receive his abundant blessings and provision. So let us take our eyes off of worthless things on this earth. Fix our eyes upon God and seek his kingdom through whom all blessings flow. As we move on to number six on our list, we start to get deep into our heart motivations which only God can see. This blessing blocker is selfishness. You see, selfishness is a blessing blocker that leads us to prioritize our desires and interests above those of others. When we act out of selfish motives, we hinder the blessings that come from serving and loving others as God commands. Jesus taught and is also the best example for us of selflessness with his words. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. While selfishness is the exact opposite and rooted in pride with a focus on self-gratification, leading us to seek our interests first at the expense of all others. However, the scripture in Philippians 2, 3 and 4 instructs us to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. So we see selflessness opens the door to God's blessings and demonstrates the love of Christ to the world. Jesus himself set the ultimate example of selflessness through his sacrificial death on the cross for our sins. He calls us to follow his example and to love one another as he has loved us. When we lay down our lives for others and serve them with humility and compassion, we reflect the character of Christ and open ourselves up to his abundant blessings. Throughout scripture, we see numerous examples of selfless individuals God richly blessed. The widow who gave her last two coins in the temple demonstrated sacrificial generosity and was commended by Jesus for her faithfulness. The Good Samaritan also showed compassion to a wounded stranger, exemplifying the command to love our neighbors as ourselves. As we strive to overcome selfishness in our lives, the best example to model is to look to the example of Christ and seek opportunities to serve others with humility and love, just like him. By putting the needs of others before our own, we open ourselves up to the abundant blessings of God's grace, favor, and provision. Finally, we come to our last block to blessing, which is disobedience to God's commands. This is a major blessing blocker that can separate us not only from his abundant blessings, but from eternal life itself. When we choose to go our way instead of following God's will, we hinder his blessings from manifesting in our lives. Scripture reminds us of the importance of obedience in Deuteronomy 28.1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Obedience demonstrates our love for God and trust in his wisdom and sovereignty. When we obey God's commands, we align ourselves with his will and open ourselves up to receive his blessings. Jesus also emphasized the importance of obedience in receiving blessings in his teachings, declaring, If you love me, keep my commands. He also likened obedience to building a solid foundation for our lives, saying, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Throughout scripture we see the consequences of disobedience, and the rewards of obedience. The Israelites' disobedience to God's commands led to their exile and captivity, yet God remained faithful to his promises and provided a way for their restoration. Conversely, those who obeyed God's commands experienced his blessings and favor. Abraham's obedience to God's call fulfilled God's promises to him and his descendants for a thousand generations. To overcome disobedience, let us submit ourselves wholeheartedly to God's will and his word. Let us strive to obey his commands out of love and reverence for him, knowing that his ways are higher than our ways and his plans are for our good. By walking in obedience to God, 
we position ourselves to receive his abundant blessings and experience his love, grace and provision. So now, beloved, as we go forward, let us surrender pride, fear, selfishness and disobedience, embracing faith, forgiveness, humility and obedience to receive God's blessings abundantly. Let us say this prayer of blessing and abundance together. Heavenly Father, in your presence we humble ourselves, acknowledging your sovereignty and grace. We thank you for revealing the blessing blockers in our lives and guiding us to overcome them. As we bow before you, we repent our pride, fear, selfishness and disobedience. We lay these burdens at your feet, trusting in your mercy and forgiveness to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, grant us the strength and courage to walk in faith, embracing your promises with unwavering trust. Help us to release the grip of fear that holds us back from stepping into the fullness of your blessings. May your perfect love cast out all fear, empowering us to live boldly for your kingdom. Teach us the art of forgiveness, Lord. As you have forgiven us, help us forgive others, releasing the bitterness and resentment that bind our hearts. Fill us with your grace and compassion that we may extend mercy to those who have wronged us, just as you have shown mercy to us. Father, instill a spirit of humility so that we may recognize our dependence on you. Strip away the pride that blinds us to your will and your ways. May we walk in humility before you and others, esteeming them higher than ourselves and serving with a heart of love. Guide us, O Lord, in paths of obedience. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, leading us in righteousness and truth. Help us to submit our will to yours, trusting that your ways are higher and your plans are for our good. Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Empower us to love you and others selflessly, to bear witness to your goodness and grace in a world desperate for your love. May your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives as in heaven. We thank you, Father, for your abundant blessings and unfailing love that sustains us daily. Help us always to seek your kingdom first, knowing that you are our provider and sustainer. May your name be glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.